So, this video was supposed to be a light-hearted info piece, one that looked at the quirky Phobian feature known as the Phobos monolith. However, as I started my research, all sorts of crackpot theories kept cropping up, most of which were based on totally false information. So, let's set the record straight once and for all and debunk a few things along the way. Now, the Phobos monolith gained a lot of attention when semi-eccentric living legend and former astronaut Buzz Aldrin spoke about it on C-SPAN. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe. Now, it's pretty obvious to you and I that Buzz was simply excited about the monolith but he's been misquoted and misinterpreted many a time. In one case, blatantly so, by certified crackpot Alex Jones. We have this, what looks like almost a perfect monolith on this moon, and then here you are, one of the first moonwalkers, uh, when the eagle lands, you're wanting to, uh, you're on television saying we need to go there to see this monolith. You're saying it's very curious, and again, I saw your eyes light up on television. What is your gut this monolith is, or what are, a Marsologist saying it could be. Now I imagine Marsologists, which by the way is not the correct term, you mean Aerologists, named after Ares, the Greek version of Mars. Now they would tell you that's not the Phobos monolith. What you're looking at is actually found on the surface of Mars. Doing a quick search of the Phobos monolith and you'll find plenty of captivating photos. The problem is a significant number of them are just wrong. Some of these cases can be shrugged off as a simple mix-up due to the fact that there's actually a monolith on the surface of Mars, which looks far more monolithy than the one on Phobos does. However, that image that Alex Jones used in the clip isn't even one of the Mars monolith. It's of some random boulder on the other side of the planet. Now, every image out there that claims to be the Phobos monolith comes from either the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter or the Mars Global Surveyor, two satellites with very powerful cameras that took hundreds of photos of Mars and its moons. Now, since there's a common source for both the real and mislabeled images of the Phobos monolith, it's tempting to let the confusion slide. But in an age of misinformation, facts shouldn't be taken at face value unless there is a source to back it up a philosophy that should be applied to this video. That's why I've gone and collated all the sources for you. Every photo taken by these two satellites is available online, the links to which can be found in the description below. The list of sources contain links to every image of the actual Phobos monolith, as well as those that claim to be it. If you want to investigate these images for yourself, and I strongly urge that you do, I'd recommend pausing the video now while every image is on the screen. However, if you'd like to learn more about the monolith and where it may have come from, then please keep on watching. So the biggest question you're probably asking, is this a monolith? Why yes, yes it is. Geologically speaking, a monolith is a single stone or rock, and we have plenty of these on Earth, such as the Pedra da Gavea in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the Sangale Hill in Pakistan, and Beacon Rock in Washington State, USA. The Phobos monolith is a boulder-shaped feature about 30 to 50 meters across and, calculating from its shadow, is about 90 meters high, roughly the same height as the Elizabeth Tower that houses Big Ben. So where did it come from? Well, monoliths on Earth are formed from molten rock oozing out of the surface, often the result of tectonic shifts. Now, considering Phobos is too small to A, generate enough internal heat to melt rock, and B, have tectonic plates, it's safe to say that the Phobos monolith didn't originate this way, However, Phobos is covered in craters, meaning this monolith could well be the debris from one of the many impacts that have occurred in the moon's history. In a similar vein, there's also a small chance that the monolith came from an impact on Mars that ejected rocks high enough to escape the red planet's gravity and smack into Phobos. Again, this is plausible. Chunks of Mars have ended up here on Earth, and we're a bit further away from Mars than Phobos is. Alternatively, the Phobos monolith may not be the result of an impact, and it could be a shard of the moon's more solid inner rock that's simply jutting out of the surface. But I know what you want me to say. You want to hear that this artificial looking structure is clearly the work of some extraterrestrial being and is obviously the cornerstone of an intricate communication network that is connecting every single part of our solar system and beyond. Well, given the few plausible, and more importantly, sane explanations for the origins of this monolith looking for being feature, there's no need to entertain the notion that this monolith is even remotely alien. Unless you're Alex Jones. I do know Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. Buzz Aldrin said, I want to come on your show, and, I, and I'm not going to get into all the heat. I know he lives here in LA, and one time I ran into him, but let's leave it at that. And he said, I want to come on your show. And I said, all right, well, come on. 
And it's the only interview he said, and he goes, I'm going to tell you, Alex, and your audience alone. He said, there is an obelisk, just like 2001. It's on the moon of Mars, the soul moon, and it's sending a transmission, and it's all real, and it's all Egypt, and there's aliens and everything else. And it's the only time he ever said it. What? He said that. To sum up, these images below are the Phobos monolith, whereas this, 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 and this is not the Phobos monolith. Now, don't get me wrong, it's so much more compelling to believe that beings not of this earth have planted highly sophisticated communication devices within our eye line, but sometimes you've got to accept the fact, if it looks like a big rock, it's probably a big rock.